Okay, everybody. So, um, for those of you who've just joined us, welcome to the large scale computing session. And the second talk in this session is going to be given by Chris Wood from EPCC, who's going to be talking about containerization of Nemo employing singularity. Cones or cones? Uh, cones, just cones. Um, cool, thank you. Um, so, first, a uh, admission that I've completely stolen these slides off James, basically. Um, so James and I were working on this um, as part of a, an R2 funded mini project um, to see about the, to see if we could containerize um, a big complicated model, um, in this case NEMO. So NEMO is an ocean model, which is uh, the nucleus for European modeling of the oceans. Um, and this is kind of our experiences of, of using Singularity. So many of you will know about Singularity, I'll go into more about it in a sec. Um, just because it's the way we've done it doesn't mean it's the perfect way or the, or the best way, and there are probably better ways. Um, but yeah, the, these are our experiences that I wanted to share. Um, so we have Nemo, obviously, and now we have Nemo in a container. <laughs> <As I say. laughs> all the creativity here is James. He, he should get all the credit. Um, so containers, ideally, are to help with end-to-end -end reproducible science. Um, so what we can do is, uh, if we've got a data center which, which holds the data, so you know, we might have one of the NERC ones, um, and we can have code in a, in, in a repository somewhere, and we can, we can make all those things work together in a, in a, in a nice little pipeline. Um, we've got version control, we've got um, uh, data stored in, a, in Zenodo or anywhere like that. Um, and then you've got runtime. And traditionally, you've needed um, a local expert. In this case, this is a guy called Andrew Coward at, at NOC, who's kind of their local HPC expert, um, to help compile the code and run it on an, either a local HPC or to get their help to run it on a, on a national facility. And um, ideally, you don't, you don't want to rely on some be, be people like that um, because their, their time is quite precious. Um, and ideally, hopefully, uh, a, a scientist should be able to do that kind of stuff themselves. Um, so hopefully, a container can help solve that problem. Um, so, but containers might not always work. Um, so this is a, a contrived example from Vanessa Sokat, who's at uh, one of the national labs, I think. Um, and this is her analogy that even if you have all the ingredients, um, to make the perfect uh, macron, um, and I tell you the perfect recipe, uh, you might not still get the macron that I create because your environment might be a little bit different. So your oven might be a different humidity, uh, oven, um, oven might be a different temperature, your kitchen might be a different humidity or anything like that, and suddenly your macron look like this. When ideally, you want the macrons to look like the ones in the top right corner, right? Uh, and how we can solve that is for me to make the macron and send them to you in a container, and therefore you have got the same macron that I created. Um, that's a bit of a contrived example, and, and you know there are lots of people here who can be able to pick holes in that analogy. But but when we've been presenting this kind of work to to kind of normal scientists, um, they, they they don't they don't pick the hole in the, the obvious holes in that analogy. Um, so you know. There are lots of options for, for containers work now. Um, so Docker is the obvious one for, uh, for you know, things like um, web development and things like that. And, and then for HPC, there are um, Podman and Charlie Cloud and, and Singularity, um, each of which have got pros and cons, which I haven't got time to go into now. Um, but as James has said here, containers are lightweight packages um, of your application code together with dependencies, such as specific versions, um, uh, of and the versions of programming languages and the libraries required to run your 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 model. Um, so ideally, that sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. Hopefully, if I give you what is needed in a container without any of the OS dependencies or different environment variables or anything like that, it should just work. Um, so, Nemo container. This is like the, the the work that we basically have been doing over the last kind of on and off over the last year or so, year and a half. Um, so a, singular, a singularity software uh, means that the runtime environment is independent of the host, and that's quite important. That, that get with, gets rid of the environment issues. 
Um, singularity is pretty configurable, and that's, that's useful. Um, as I said before, we want to remove the setup and compilation issues faced by the user. So in this case, not having to um, rely on, on like the local HPC expert, um, and it should be something that, that a scientist or modeler can do themselves. Um, it can run complex applications either on HPC clusters or on your desktop. So if you're, if you're developing Nemo or you want to try something out, um, it means that you don't have to um, install all the libraries on your own computer. Um, you can run the, uh, uh, the model in the container on your local desktop and it should still be able to, to, to run. Um, you obviously won't get the, the, the performance benefits and things like that, um, but if you're just doing code development, then that's not important. Um, Singularity is open source, so which is a bonus. Uh, it's widely used in, uh, in lots of areas of academia. Um, uh, it's become kind of quite adopted in on a lot of HPC systems um, because of its security model, um, and, and as it's kind of you know, it helps with portability and reproducibility because it means that you can store code and data in the same in the same place, um, and I did, and, and even that you can um, run. Uh, your container with uh, and store the store the output in the same place as well. So you can do kind of clever things to, uh, with that, um, so that you can then distribute your container, having also already run it, um, to prove that uh, the conditions that it was running. Um, so simply put, you know, this is a, a pretty short example, um, but all you need to build all you need to build Nemo is this singularity file. Uh, definition file. So you, you import the, the OS that you need. Um, you can import a couple of files. Um, so in this case, uh, so Nemo is a bit weird in that it, it can have different configurations. So you need to tell Nemo at, at build time what configuration type you're going to have, which is why we have a Nemo.in. Um, you, can, you can set an internal environment variable for, for um, uh, the environment within the container, um, just so that all the paths are correct. Uh, and then the slightly weird thing about, about Singularity is that when you uh, import the, the OS, it is a completely empty OS, okay? So there's, there's, there's nothing. So you have to start apt installing everything, uh, which is why you start like installing locale and software properties common, which most people would never have to think to do. Uh, and then you can install the, the library you need for Nemo uh, and download Nemo off the, off the um, SVM repository that it's stored on in France. Uh, and then make XRS and make Nemo. So XRS um, is an in-out uh, I.O. library uh, for power computing, uh, which Nemo makes use of. Um, and then you have a run script, uh, and then because we're running it on, a, on HPC, um, different, different cores will run Nemo, and, and then you'll have a, a core running the I.O., so XRS. So then you can, you can have flags just to specify um, which program is going to get run on which core. Um, and that's, that's easy. Uh, and then you can build it. Um, so you need a bit of you know, the, the, this Nemo in file. Um, is just a set of few uh, important variables. So uh, what version of Nemo you want um, uh, and yeah, what, what Nemo component you want as well. So OCE is some, some, uh, some uh, Atlantic modeling thing, is according to the oceanographers. Um, and an MPI flag because we can we can change whether we, whether we're going to build uh, open MPI or MPitch in the container, uh, and then and then you can build it with a, a singularity build command. Um, so uh, you have a, 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 a Nemo version 404 with OCE, um, or you can have a different container with Nemo OCE with with um, some ice modeling uh, from a different uh, branch of the contain uh, different branch of the repository uh, or a different version again you know so you can have all these different containers um, so and then all you need to do is all you need to do is uh, run the container so you have you know a standard MPI command um, you have to do some weird stuff with binding to cores uh, for you know, reasons which are too complicated to go into here really, but this is this is kind of highlighting that um, you have on one core you have uh, XIS, so that's the first line, and the second line for your remaining 95 cores, you're running Nemo. So this is the idea about having parallel um, I/O uh, running on a different core. 
Um, anything else on that slide interesting? Uh, yeah, so you've got, you, again, you can kind of import the, the configuration. You run it on Archer, and then you get a nice, uh, nice output of, of the, um, the Northeast Atlantic and the shelf seas around the UK, which is what oceanographers like to see. Um, so that sounds really simple, right? Unfortunately, you'll have lots of dependencies, and all the dependencies don't even fit together. So this is kind of my contribution, really. So I spent a long time trying to work out which dependencies I needed, how to install them, and as I've already said, because you, uh, you start off with a completely and utterly blank OS, working out which version even of which of the really basic low-level OS things you need. And that's not always straightforward, and you spend a lot of time working out which ones you need. Um, Build time, right? Okay, so you are building everything, and it takes a long time. If anybody's ever tried to build uh, all of these dependencies from scratch, um, the build time for the container was about uh, 45 minutes at one point. So if you're trying to do kind of you know, agile development, that's quite a long time. And it's quite a lot of context switching because then you have to go and do something else. Then you come back and you're going to switch context again and you have to work out what's wrong, what's gone wrong. And then you try it and you try and fix it. 45 minutes later, you go off again. And it, and it was a you know, bit of a pain. Um, and just to clarify for Andy, I, I didn't fall asleep on my desk when I was waiting for it to build. Um, <laughs> um, bind paths. So uh, I mentioned about um, some of the issues with uh, I'll, I'll go into this more in a sec, um, but uh, Singularity requires the MPI version in the container and the MPI version on the host to be compatible, um, and that means that uh, under certain conditions, the, uh, you have to be really careful with making sure that you bind in a specific version of the MPI on the host into the container so that you know they're going to be um, compatible with each other. And it got to the point where I had horrendously long uh, bind paths from the host into the, into the container. Uh, and that, you know, having a bind path that were like, like 80 lines, like eight lines long or something stupid was, was like just a bit mind blowing for me. Uh, and, and I didn't really cope with it very well. Uh, and then finally, options. So I've already said we, we thought about OpenMPI and MPitch. Uh, and then I kind of, you know, the, uh, kind of a fallacy of me, really, I kind of ended up with this thing on the right where I, I tried to work out whether, you know, is it worth building all these different containers for, um, uh, to test all the different options, or should we just pick one and, and hope it works? Um, and, um, and I haven't really solved that issue yet, but yeah, that, that's a kind of more of a weakness for me rather than a weakness of singularity. But it doesn't, it, it, it is a, uh, it, it, I mean, singularity does give you the, this option has so many options um, that, that it's probably quite easy to fall into that trap. Um, so the build time, um, James did fix this to some extent by uh, having coming up with a, a, a really clever workflow that, that he kind of got inspiration for from um, a Vanessa Soka again um, in the US. So what you can do is you take your cones repository on GitHub, um, you fork it, so then you have your, your own version of cones in a different repository. You um, branch it uh, and edit your Nemo in file and the, and the, the uh, Nemo version that you have. Um, you create a pull request. I mean, if, if it, yeah, these are all your own doing, so you, cre you create your own pull request and then you go and put it back into your own main repository. Uh, and then there is a set of GitHub actions, uh, and these go off and test the container and make sure it works or not. Um, so uh, when you and then you merge to main, and when you merge to main, it then uh, generates um, another GitHub action uh, to release um, a final version of the um, of the container, uh, and automatically generates a. Um, a container that is released as a as a as a, as a uh, GitHub release product. Uh, what's the word? But yeah. Um, and the advantage of this workflow is that it's much much faster. So uh, uh, using the GitHub actions means that you're taking advantage of the GitHub compute workflow, um, and 
we were finding that's probably about an order of order, order magnitude faster than building it on a local machine. Um, but you know, we, we were lucky enough that we, we didn't hit the limits of, of what Kit provides. Um, I can imagine that if people who are doing this regularly or on bigger projects might, might, might get close to the limits of what GitHub gives you for free. Um, so performance, that's the important thing. Uh, so our experimental setup was that we had, uh, we did build different uh, MPI and MPI in some respects uh, for summer issues. So uh, running it on bare metal, so that's not within a, within a container. Um, these um, graphs are a bit confusing. James did admit that when we were going through it a couple of weeks ago. Um, so on the right axis, you've got uh, model hours per year. So how long did it take to simulate a, a single year in hours? Uh, and then on the left, you've got the speed up of the code. Um, and you've got some weird super scaling happening here. Um, and uh, we didn't know why that was happening. And, and we asked uh, Andy. And Andy thinks it was to do with some weird caching uh, effect because it's a relatively small uh, runtime in this case. Um, so the black line is the ideal. And then um, the, the GMU uh, optimized to zero, um, uh, you, know, you, you get some scaling, but it not, not, not quite ideal. And then the other three are, so the other three are uh, optimized at, at one, two, and three. Um, you, get, you get this um, super scaling. So now if we look at um, the, uh, the, uh, the container version, so um, I'm going to skip that side, sorry, because <laughs> that doesn't mean, really mean anything extra in the time I've got left. So again, this is a pretty confusing figure, that, that, but uh, it does make sense if you think about it carefully. So in red, you've got... Um, uh, models, containers are, are, are running slower than you would hope, and blue is a speed up, so the, the percent is um, a percent reduction. So uh, it's all relative to a bare metal um, GNU mPitch run. Um, so Cray mPitch, uh, you might expect, is actually quite fast. Uh, GNU Open MPI is a bit slower. Um, and then the, the other varying containers are all slower again. So the take home message here is that containers do have a performance uh, impact and you have to ask yourself if you're going to go through the, the process of building a container, is, um, is that important to you or not? So, you know, none of, none of the um, containers performed particularly well. Some of them weren't that bad. So the, the GMUH, um, for example, where you've got a 0.49 um, again, that's um, hours uh, per year, so it increases from 0.49 to 0.51. Um, you know, that's on the scale that you, you probably wouldn't really care. Um, but some of the other ones are much, are kind of much worse, and you have to work out whether that's important to you or not. Um, and again, I'll sort of skip that one for the interest of time. So, does it help with reproducible science? So. If you've got a science paper and you've got code and data and figures and you can't link them, then it makes it quite hard to, um, to publish. You know, it, it's much better now if you can put all those things together. And this is that idea that I mentioned earlier that if you run a container, um, you, can, uh, you can store the results in the container so then you can distribute that container and hopefully it will make it much easier for people to kind of validate your, your, your results. Um, so yeah, accessibility and portability are important. Um, so uh, ABI is an um, application binary interface, so it does help um, to, uh, if, if you've got M uh, MPI libraries that are compatible with each other, so MPitch and Intel um, uh, are compatible at, ABI, at the ABI level, um, then hopefully you can build a container in one place and run it on a different place. Um, replication is, is built on, we've already said that. Um, so James did a bit of work with the, um, the uh, Nemo testing tool, um, and it helps with that because it means you can, you can test it again all in one place. Uh, and then there are various other um, tools that the SIF uh, provides. 
So you can sandbox, you can, you can build things in a sandbox to test things separately. Um, and uh, yeah, these are just things that you can come and talk to me about later. Um, so hopefully, is it a step in the right direction? Probably. Do we care about performance? Yes. But uh, is that uh, a problem? It depends. And that is it. So we do have a, 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 a repo with a, with a readme and stuff. Um, and if you've got any questions and without, we haven't got time for it here, then find me later. Okay, so um, we've got time for a few questions, hopefully. So um, from Slido, why did you choose um, Singularity rather than one of the other container technologies that you mentioned? Uh, because it was already uh, installed on Cirrus. <laughs> right, a simple answer. Um, oh, well, the next one's not really a question, it's just saying that um, y here's a way to improve your macaron analogy. You can send your whole kitchen if you want. I don't know how feasible that is. Um, <laughs> how common is it to find the singularity runtime on HPC systems? Um, it's becoming a lot more common. So it's on Archer 2, it's on um, a couple of the here, two machines. It's on, um, uh, it's on, it is on Cirrus, what he said. Um, it's on the, a couple of the um, US National Lab ones. It's on uh, the Spanish one and the German one, I think. So it is becoming much more common. I'm getting a nod that it's on the German one, I think. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, in your experimental setup, you mentioned a hybrid MPI option. What uh, does that consist of? So yeah, good question. I uh, didn't really have time to go into that, but so hybrid is when, so singularity, again, it's this weird concept that you can either rely only on the MPI on the host, uh, or you can rely on MPI in the container and on the host. So uh, the, that latter version is called hybrid because you're relying on two different versions of MPI and they have to rely on each other. They have to be compatible. Excuse me. And that's, that's the, um, the issue I was having with uh, uh, binding the MPI into the container. Okay, I think you're going for some sort of record in terms of number of questions answered at the end of the talk. Um, is there a write-up of your benchmarking results somewhere people can access? Uh, there is a paper being written. Uh, so yes, uh, no, no, not yet, but there will be. Thank you. Um, oh, this was a long one. Could you edit your build to use environment variables for config rather than input files? You can specify environment variables on GitHub Actions and even input them on manually triggered ones. Potentially a simple workflow than the PR to main solution. Yes. <laughs> It, 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 is, it is potentially a better solution. Um, the, so James came up with that uh, uh, because of... Um, uh, so it, it is possible, but then you're also changing some of the, the uh, Nemo way of thinking, just a Nemo workflow where they're so used to having uh, an, an in file that it would, be, it would be changing that workflow. So you might be adding a bit more confusion to make the workflow simpler. Um, so, you know, again... Right, I think we're going to have time for one more, maybe, or it depends how quick you are, Chris. Um, why is Singularity better for HPC than Docker? Um, I, I'm not going to ask the second bit of that question. <laughs> um, because the security model in Docker is that uh, you are a new user. So when you, when you enter a Docker container, you are, uh, yeah, as I say, you're a new user, and that gives you all the privileges of being able to do things like root access and things like that. Um, and then... Uh, there are issues which Docker have never fixed, which means that you can then escape. And when you escape, you have the same privileges outside the container that you are inside the container. And HPC systems don't like it when you're root on their systems. Um, Singularity doesn't have that issue, so you're the same user in the container with the same UID and the GID that you are outside the container. So even if you can escape, there's no issue with you being able to do anything wrong. Great, thank you very much. So uh, we've run out of time. I'm sure Chris will be happy to answer any more questions or we've, we didn't get to your question. Uh, can we thank Chris once again, please? Thank you.